meets here at Malden. Hope you all got a nap. I know I did. Just a few announcements. Some of them we had this morning. We're going to say them again. And a couple of new ones for those of you who, uh, who, who are, are here this evening that weren't here this morning. Um, Diane and Delilah are home sick with a stomach bug. And uh, Jeannie uh, is home with, sick with the flu. We also we have a lot of folks that are out traveling um, in Disney World this week. So let's keep them in your prayers. They have a good time and safe travels that the weather might cooperate. I uh, also want to let our visitors know that uh, if you're visiting with us, I want you to know that you are an honored, honored guest. And we are happy that you chose to come here and worship with us this evening. Also, one more reminder uh, that our evening worship starting January 1st, which is not next week, but the week after, we will be starting at 6 p.m. and no longer at 5 p.m. Also, we... Uh, We'd like to know, we'd like to let everybody know that uh, this evening uh, our personal works group is meeting uh, back in the classrooms to this evening after worship service. Uh, anyone who can stay and help would be greatly appreciated. That's really all I have for this evening. Let's also remember Harry Smith's family, his wife Debbie and his friends. If you knew Harry Smith, you knew that he was a wonderful guy to be around and he loved the Lord. Great example. Uh, Harry Smith, and also uh, uh, Miss Dorothy Pierce. Uh, we buried her on Friday last week, um, so she will be missed, no doubt about it. In this, that's all announcements that I have. Uh, in this evening's worship service, uh, Dennis Stroud will be having our lesson. Uh, Brother Dennis will also be serving the Lord's table for those who didn't have an opportunity this morning. Joel Foster will be leading our song service. Joe Mormon will be closing us in prayer this evening, and we'll open with opening prayer with his brother Dale. Bow with me, please. Our most kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have that we can come out and take part in this worship service here tonight. And we thank you for your son Jesus that he came to this earth, lived, and died as a man. He hung, hung up on that cruel cross, for each and every one of us. We pray that we will all look unto him. We will do, we want to obey his will so at the end of our time we can have a home with thee in heaven. I also pray at this time that you'll be the ones of our number, Harry Smith and Dorothy Pierce. Pray that you'll be with their families, comfort them at this time, the loss of their loved ones. Be with all the ones of our number, their shut ins, be with our sick, so they may return back to our health and be back with us. Pray that you'll be with many of our number, their traveling, and pray you'll keep them safe also and return them also back to their home. Pray that you'll be with Brother Joel tonight as he leads our singing. May we'll all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Pray that you'll be with Brother Dennis as he leads our lesson tonight. May we'll all take these lessons that he teaches unto us. We'll study them ourselves and apply them to our lives <coughs> so we can be stronger Christians and pray that we can go out and teach others our word. I also thank you for Dennis and Vic as they work here with us with this congregation. Pray here at this congregation that each and everything we say and do here always be according to thy will. We thank you for the church here. Thank you for the church the world over. Also pray that you'll always be with us, that you'll always guard, guide, direct us, and forgive us all many sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I had known my voice was going to hold out this afternoon, I'd pick a couple more songs, but we'll have a short song service tonight because I wasn't sure how it was going to hold up. Two, five, zero. Two, five, zero. <coughs> mm -hmm. How 
sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord in one another's peace delight and so fulfill the world when each can feel his brother's side and with him bear apart. When sorrow flows from heart to eye, and joy from heart to heart. When free from envy, scorn, and pride, Comes kind of speaks to us. Four, four, six. Four, four, six. <clears throat> No. 
Glad I brought my warmer coat with me tonight. First Corinthians chapter 13. Verses 4 through 8. Paul writes here, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it too will pass away. A young man was asking him fa his father for some dating advice. He was really trying to win over this young lady. So his, his father, he said to him, son, would you take her out for pizza tonight? He said, you're sitting across from her. Take her hand, look her in the eyes, and say, wow, you have a face that can make time stand still. That night, the young man, he took his girl out, and they were eating, and he sat across, and he took her hand, and he looked in her eyes, and he said, wow, you have a face that could stop a clock. <laughs> I seriously doubt that that line worked at all. There probably wasn't a second date. He was trying to follow, follow his father's advice. He was trying to say, I love you. But that is definitely not what she heard. You know, when we were young, and I used to like the dandelion because it had more petals on it. And you would pick those petals off, and it was, she loves me, she loves me not. Now, I didn't use that. Uh, I used the word like, because when I started doing that, I was a little too young for the love part. Some of those petals were love me petals, and the rest were love me nots. Tonight, we're going to look at the love me nots. For there are seven love me nots in the verses that I just read. Envy, boasting, arrogance, self-seeking, being irritable, resentful, <coughs> keeping record of wrongdoing. How do we recognize these love me nots? Will we be able to see them if some of them show up in our own lives? For those who are covered in these love me nots, are most often boastful, proud, and self-seeking. A lot of people wrap themselves up in themselves. They tend to think of themselves first. And I guess if we're honest and we admit, most of us are like that to a certain point. Dennis Waitley, he wrote in a book called Empires of the Mind, and in that book, he said that there are approximately 450,000 words in the English language. But 80% of our conversations only use 400 or so of those words. And the most common words that we find, that we use on a daily basis, is I, me, my, and mine. In fact, we oftentimes are so focused on ourselves, that when people are out there looking for a church, they are looking for a congregation that will meet their needs. The preacher had gone into a supermarket, and as he was going down the aisles, a guy comes straight at him, and he stopped in front of the preacher, and he said, I left your church. And the preacher said to him, well, if it's my church, I think that's a wise decision. He said, well, don't you want to know why I left? And the preacher said, well, no, not particularly, but I think I'm going to find out. And he said to her, you weren't meeting my needs. And the preacher, he said, well, I don't recall seeing you before, let alone talking to you let alone knowing what your needs were. 
Did you ever tell anyone specifically what your needs are? And he couldn't recall, and, and he said, and she said, and he raised another question. He says, Well, can you tell me if we have 5,000 people sitting in that church, all with your attitude, how is anyone going to meet all those needs? And if everyone has that attitude, if you reserve that right to have that attitude, everyone should have that attitude. <coughs> if everyone has that attitude, who on earth is going to do all that need meeting? See, that's not what Jesus wants us to think. Jesus said in Mark 9, verse 35, that if anyone be, would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And this is important for Jesus because when a person is proud, when a person is boastful and selfish, not only are they not serving God and his kingdom, but they're also not concerned about whether anyone else will be going to heaven. There is a story of a woman who found herself in hell and she felt that she didn't deserve to be there. She couldn't bear the suffering any longer and she cried out for God's mercy. And God listened and was moved with pity and he said to her, if you can remember one good deed that you did in your lifetime, I will help you. And she thought and she thought and then she remembered. She said that she had given an onion to a starving neighbor. So God produced an onion complete with the stem. And the woman grabbed the onion and God started to pull her up. But there were others who were with her that wanted to go too and they grabbed hold of her because they wanted to be lifted out too. Now the stem of the onion held and it would have saved them all, but the woman began to kick and scream for them all to let go. And all that thrashing about ended up breaking that stem and they all went back to hell. The woman wanted to be saved, but she didn't care whether anyone else was or not. <clears throat> That was because she was selfish. She was that self-centered, love me not. The second kind of love me not is the envious or jealous person. Those who are jealous of other people's happiness. And this love me not is very closely associated with the first one. If I'm proud, if I'm boastful, if I'm self-seeking, I tend to be envious of others who are more successful, more happy, more fulfilled. There are really seven things in this life that challenges us. Materialism, pride, self-centeredness, laziness, anger, bitterness, lust, and envy. Envy is such a significant challenge to God's people that in the Ten Commandments, it's even on that list. Exodus 20, verse 17 says, Thou shalt not covet. Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, it was the envy of Cain. It caused him to kill Abel. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 8 and 9, Saul was envious over David's popularity and tried to have him killed. Matthew 26, verses 3 and 4, those chief priests, the Pharisees, were envious of Jesus' popularity. They crucified him. Envy cannot abide in someone else being successful. It can abide in someone being fulfilled and happy especially when they are not. When we think of all the divisiveness in our country, the problem isn't politics. The problem isn't systemic racism. 
That's all just a cover. The problem is envy. If we could get rid of envy in our country, we would solve 90% of our problems. We are blessed to have the same opportunities in this country, just not all take advantage of them. We would rather spend our time complaining about what others have that they don't have. We can cure this problem if we try. This brings us to the last set of these love me nots. These are the actions that come from a proud, boastful, and arrogant heart. These behaviors are the ones that envy and jealousy resort to. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 5 and 6, that tells us that love is not irritable, that it's not rude, that it's re not resentful, that it does not rejoice in wrongdoing. You know somebody who gets angry real easy? Do you know anyone who just the wrong word spoken at the wrong time will set them off? <coughs> How about those who have the tendency to be rude to someone else? You know somebody who keeps a list of the wrong that have been done to them and the ones who did it? Do you know someone who gets very excited and happy when something bad happens to someone that's on their wrongdoing list? You know, this is the heart of what Paul is writing about, especially here in chapter 13 to the church in Corinth. This was not a loving church. These people had serious, deep problems. They didn't share much with each other. They argued about all kinds of things. They would even take one another to court when they got mad enough. They got angry with each other very easily. They were rude to one another. And if a brother and sister in Christ ever offended them, they got on the list. You know about the list, don't you? A tally sheet. A tally sheet that is kept within the mind that keeps score of who offended them. There they go again. That's just what I expected of them. I bet they'll do the same thing again next week. <coughs> this is most definitely a love me not. That's a sin. You know, when we sit back and we think of what God and Christ has done for us, of the grace that was offered to us, the grace and grabbing hold of that grace that saved our souls, we're not concerned about others. Love doesn't keep a record. God doesn't keep a record. Our wrongs, when we repent of them, are gone. Think when we obeyed the gospel. Think when we come up out of that water. Did our faith in God cause us to realize that we were at that very moment sinless? That everything that we had done in the past is completely gone? Do we truly think that when we get to heaven, that all of these repented sins that God is going to bring them up again to us? No. In 1 John 1 and 9, it tells us that when we confess our sins, that Jesus is faithful and just and forgives everything that we confess. Our sins are removed as far from the east as it is to the west. That they've been dropped into the deepest ocean. God doesn't keep a list, and we shouldn't either. But in Corinth, they did. And even worse than that is that they had delighted in evil. 
They liked to listen to gossip. They liked it when a person's reputation was dragged through the mud. As a young child growing up and going to a small country church in one of the denominations, when the benediction was over, that's what they had, and they closed out services. Everybody beat feet, especially the men. They took, went outside. Us kids, we beat them all through the door. They were outside and seeing who could get the first cigarette lit the quickest, and they stand around talking and cracking jokes. The wives were inside gossiping about this person, that person. Us kids running around like banshees, just trying to get some wind under our sails a little bit before we had to go to Bible class. That was wrong. But it happened every Sunday. And come Monday, you never know that a lot of those people set foot in that church. John chapter 8 and verses 3 through 7. <clears throat> Some of the ancient manuscripts does not have uh, this account of the woman caught in adultery in it. But she was brought to Jesus, and Jesus told the crowd that brought her that if any person had no sin, that they could cast the first stone. We know the account. We know how it all worked out. That every one of those people walked away, from the oldest to the youngest. Maybe we should take a stone. Maybe we should put that stone in our pocket. And when we feel like talking behind someone's back, or we feel like we want to pass along an ugly room, and we reach in that pocket, and we touch that stone, and ask ourselves if we are without sin. Sadly, these love-me-nots can keep us from our reward. And we need to be just as mindful of the love-me-nots as we are of the love me 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is one of my most comforting and favorite of chapters in the Bible because of the subject matter. But it is also one of those chapters that can kick us in the teeth if we just skip over some of the parts and don't take in all of it. Where do we stand tonight? If we're clicking the pedal off that flower and we're going, God loves me, God loves me not, where will we stop? But you see, that's wrong too because God, regardless of our state, stature in this life, regardless of what we've done, he loves us. He will continue to love us until we're no longer here. And then he will be sad about that. So tonight is an opportunity. Tonight is an opportunity to continue to allow God to love you and to hold you even when this life on earth is gone. So obeying that gospel, repentance and confession, New Testament baptism, you can enjoy, enjoy the love of God forever and ever. And if you are a child of God, and if you realize that there are some love-me-nots in, in your heart that you need to repent of, we want to give you that opportunity also. If anyone has a need, won't you come us together? We stand and we sing. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down
bow with me please our father in heaven we thank you so much for the sacrifice that uh, you are sending your son down here to die in our stead for for the sins of the world as we partake of this uh, the bread that represents your son's body we pray that we will take it in a manner that is pleasing to you we're just grateful lord for uh, this sacrifice and for what it means and may we we never forget in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we continue in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we are grateful, Lord, for, for this, the blood that your son had shed, and for this fruit of the vine that represents that blood. And we pray, Lord, that as we take of it, this memorial feast, that we do so in a manner uh, that you find acceptable, and that is true standing within our hearts of the love that we have for you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. just leave the basket on the table if there are those who did not have the opportunity to give this morning. Bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much. We are so blessed in this life, and, and we just are just grateful, Lord, that we will have this opportunity on the first day of the week, as you commanded all Christians to do, to lay by in store. And we pray, Lord, that as we, we give our gifts, regardless of the size of that gift, that it comes truly from the heart. And that desire and that the cheerfulness that goes with it may it do tremendous works in furthering your kingdom here on this earth and we look forward to that day lord when we will no longer have to gather these gifts that we will all be together in the richest place in the universe your son your home in heaven we pray that you'll accept our gifts always in your son jesus name we pray amen we appreciate everyone being here this evening, and we, we hope that you'll be back with us on Wednesday night in our Bible study um, at 7 o'clock. And if there's nothing further, if we'll stand, we'll be dismissed with prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will watch over and care for us as we prepare to leave this place tonight. And that when we come back the next time, we point in time to worship you and study your word. We pray for us this congregation of your people that meet here. We thank you for everything you bless us with, our families and our homes. We thank you we're blessed with in everyday life. Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation. We we're thankful for this nation, the freedoms that we enjoy in this nation, but the freedoms that we have above for any people in this world can have. We pray that you be with our leaders, that we have continue to promote peace throughout the world. We pray for the ones that are suffering war in the uh, in uh, Russia, and, and that you be with the ones that were oppressed and suffering uh, and because of the war there. We pray that you will watch over and care for us. We pray for ones who are sick. We pray especially for Sue Dills and uh, Dean Westmoreland. Be with them and be with Deborah and Rick and, uh, and uh, Ruth as they continue to be ill and suffering. Uh, they stay here. 
We know there are others who are in power and are sick today. We pray that you'll be with every family and one who is suffering illness today. You'll be, they come back to be with us at the next point in time. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for uh, us to be better Christians every, every day and to take these lessons that we've heard today about love and so forth and show forth our love and love will reign in our lives. We pray for David this evening. We're thankful for David and what he means to us and we pray that we can strengthen him and help him every day. We pray that be with us now, Heavenly Father. Bless us and care for us and be with us and visit, visit with us tonight. We're thankful for the boys that come our way. We pray for them to have safe return home. Be with us as we go to our homes tonight. We pray in the strong and lovely name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.